This week on Council Bluffs News, the impact of Dr. Kenny. We look at Dr. Dan Kenny's time here at Iowa Western and the impact he's making on the school. A celebration of trains. The annual Railroad Days comes to the area exploring the history and advancements of railways. Scam alert. The Pottawatomie County Sheriff's Department is warning people about asphalt scams and what you can do to prevent from being a victim yourself. And we're joined in studio by Wendy Schultz and Mark Ekman to discuss the Let's Talk About Council Bluffs campaign. That and more all on this week's Council Bluffs News. Welcome to this week's Council Bluffs News. I'm Zach Harper Blunt. Iowa Western first opened its doors in 1967, but a different date in 1994 may be considered a grand reopening of sorts. That's the year Dr. Dan Kenny became president of the college. IWTV student Danielle Rambo has details of what a transformation the school has gone through thanks greatly to Kenny's vision and direction. Iowa Western has been serving Southwest Iowa for nearly five decades. There, there have been many changes on this campus over the years. But change, specifically growth, really took off in 1994. This campus has really transformed, been transformed into what was a little college on the hill into the premier community college in the region. The transformation began when Dr. Dan Kinney became president of the college. According to Don Kohler, vice president of marketing for Iowa Western, among Kinney's greatest accomplishments, orchestrating construction projects across the entire campus. We have a, a new arts center, uh, a new student center, new student housing, um, and now a new engineering uh, building that bears his name. Doug Goodman, a retired banker and an Iowa Western alum who serves on the board of trustees, has witnessed the impact Kenny has made over the years. The transformation of the school and the programs during that time period has been profound. Growth has also come in the classrooms. The school now offers over 80 programs of study. Numerous programs have actually been added. Uh, one of the things we're most proud of is the ability to look at what the needs within the community are. With new facilities and new academic programs has come a boost in enrollment. With the improvements on campus have, have come more students. And more student athletes. Alongside athletic director Brenda Hampton, Kinney has turned the Reaver Athletic Department into one of the nation's elite. You know, we went from having a half a dozen athletic programs to now having 18. Another area the institution is excelling in, scholarships, including some full-cost two-year scholar programs. One that he is most proud of and we as a board are most proud of is the Presidential Scholar Program. After serving 21 years, Iowa Western awards Dan Kinney for his leadership and impact on Iowa Western. In honor of Kinney's work, the school recently dedicated the newly constructed robotics building to him, placing his name on the building and his face inside it. It's pretty humbling. Uh, you know, it's something you never expect, and uh, I really appreciate it. And without his hand in the matter, like the new Kinney Hall, Iowa Western would not be where it is today. It's going to allow us to help those programs grow. For example, the electronics program has twice as much space in this building as the old building where they were located before. The board believes the latest building and plaque is well deserving for Kinney after making it his mission to make Iowa Western the premier educational institution it is today. For your Council Bluffs News, I'm Danielle Rambo. Thanks, Danielle. Dr. Dan Kinney has been in charge at Iowa Western for the past 21 years making him the longest active president of any community college in the state of Iowa. The annual Reaver Scholarship Golf Scramble taking place Friday, July 10th. Teams of four line shoreline golf course enjoying a round of golf and helping Reaver Athletics. It's one of our biggest fundraisers um, and it's a great way for us not only to, to raise some money but also to, to bring out our boosters and the people that help out our programs and, and you know, share a great day with them. 
All money raised at the scramble will go towards Reaver Athletic Scholarships. A little taste of New York City right here in Council Bluffs. Saturday, July 11th marks the opening of the newest art exhibit at RNG Gallery, One Day at a Time. This exhibition features a wide variety of talented artists from around the Council Bluffs area. If you're interested in viewing this exhibition, it can be seen at RNG Gallery, which shares space with Dixie Quicks, located at 157 West Broadway. Admission is free and it's available for viewing through Sunday, August 2nd. The annual celebration of trains Railroad days happening over the weekend. Attendees got to learn about the history of trains and the technology that goes into it. If you're from the Council Bluffs area, this is a sound you're accustomed to hearing. You've no doubt heard trains and seen them, but have you ever gotten in the driver's seat? This simulator at the Union Pacific Railroad Museum, part of the fun taking place at Railroad Days July 11th and 12th. People are so excited. This is such a great family event because there are crafts and things to see for all ages at all locations. Five different museums in the area, including the Union Pacific and Rails West Museums and the historic General Dodge House, opened their doors for the annual celebration. We had about 2,500 people yesterday come through our location alone. Uh, people are coming out despite the heat, and we're so very excited to be able to offer this event to the public. Transported to all five locations by bus and trolley, the attendees learn about the history of the railroads in the area and the technology going into it. Once you get off the train here, you get to come in our beautiful museum and see some UP employees demonstrating our mechanical derailment prevention desk. At that desk is Todd Snyder. The director of freight car engineering at Union Pacific managing the help desk that monitors sensors placed along the tracks that will alert them if there's a problem. We're showing off all the derailment prevention technologies, all the different sensor systems that we use to prevent broken rails and broken wheels and things that cause the train to leave the tracks. Something catching everybody's eye? An ultrasound machine that sends a sound through the metal that can pick up any cracks or holes in it. They're amazed at how far technology has gone for the most part and they're, uh, they're interested in some of the show and tell that we've got here. It's all part of an annual event taking you closer to the railroads than ever before. I had a, a child last year actually who was five and he was a baby the first time he came to railroad days. So people look forward to this event as the thing to do every summer. Trains have a rich history in this area as Council Bluffs is considered mile marker zero for the Union Pacific Railroad. Inspiring the Golden Spike Monument, UP World Headquarters are located just over the bridge in Omaha. In news around the Bluffs, a new art display at the Art Space Lofts is generating buzz from people of all ages. June 12th through August 22nd, an immense laser installation takes center stage. The work created by nationally known artist Dan Corson allows people to literally insert themselves into the art. It's a very dark space. It's very, I, I think it's ethereal. Um, it, and, and when you go in, it's, it's very mesmerizing. It can be... Um, it can be very exciting for kids. Corson's work is a culmination of laser focused experiments and art installations, which he worked on for the last 10 years. Corson says he likes to challenge the notion of public art and infuses installations with drama and thought provoking designs. The Main Street's Farmer Market returns to the 100 block of Broadway July 9th. Over 20 vendors from around the area line the streets selling produce, arts and crafts, and music. The Farmer's Market is every Thursday from 5 to 8 and runs through October. Open for two months, they're finally settled in. Wednesday, July 8th, Palm Beach Vapor celebrates the opening of its doors with a ribbon cutting. Today was um, a good stepping stone for me because it just shows that the goal I wanted to achieve at this store was to create a community around it. Um, I wanted people to feel comfortable coming down here, hanging out. Located at 1505 West Broadway, Palm Beach Vapors is an e-cig and vapor store with a tropical theme. They claim to offer an inviting and relaxing vaping environment. Coming up on Council Bluffs News, the Pottawatomie County Sheriff's Department is alerting people of possible asphalt scams. Learn how they work and how you can prevent them. And after the break, find out about a new campaign asking for community input on possible improvements throughout the city 
in our in-studio interview. So the mayor really wanted something that the current residents and community could hold their, hang their hat on. Create new opportunities and expand your knowledge with Iowa Western's continuing and career education. It was really intimidating to go back to school, but Iowa Western made me really feel like I could do it. Our goal is to help students achieve success from education to employment. Learn more, including information on extra benefits for Iowa residents at iwcc.edu slash continuing underscore education. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. For those dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers to help us better care for ourselves and the ones we love. If you store your guns properly. So not just anyone can get to them. I'll feel safer when I'm playing outside. Safer when walking home. I won't have to tell so many family members. I'm sorry. I won't hear as many scary stories or scary news reports. I won't have to hold someone's hand and shout you're going to make it. And I won't have to tell my kids this isn't a drill. Please. 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 Do it for us. For us. Do it for us. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. If you own a firearm and are not using it, please be responsible and be sure that it's stored in a safe place. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. At Council Plus Savings Bank, you still get personalized customer service. We have identity safe checking with LifeLock, identity theft protection. You get personal mortgage lending to fit your needs now and in the future. You get business banking with the latest technology because saving you time saves you money. At Council of Savings Bank, you get people who answer when you call and local employees who are actively involved in our community. Council of Savings Bank, hometown banking the way it used to be. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore. And frustration? A tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. Welcome back to Council Bluffs News. I'm Zach Harper Blunt, joined in studio by Wendy Schultz, the city's chief of staff and Mark Ekman, the Executive Director at the Council Bluffs Convention and Visitors Bureau. Thank you for joining us here today in studio. Thank you for having us. You, there's a campaign going on here in Council Bluffs called the Let's Talk About Council Bluffs Campaign. Uh, Wendy, can you tell us a little bit about that? Certainly. The, um, the campaign that's going on is called the Image Campaign. It's an initiative being led by the Mayor's Office. Okay. Um, the, the city hasn't really had a new image or branding, per se, in many years. The last one we had was um, Leading Edge, I was Leading Edge, Council Plus, I was Leading Edge. Okay. So the mayor really wanted something that the current residents and community could hold their, hang their hat on, and something that meant something to them. Okay, and Mark, uh, with this campaign, how will this attract more people here to Council Plus? Well, we really need to have something authentic that really is appealing to not only potential visitors, but also the residents too, because they're critically important in terms of selling our area. And so coming up with that image, projecting it, uh, really getting people interested in coming here, that's all going to benefit the community. Okay. And not too long ago, you sent out surveys to the community. Can you tell us about the surveys, Wendy, uh, what the surveys were for? 
those servers are basically, we want to start with a baseline. What do people think about Council Bluffs today? Why are they proud to live here? What um, makes them happy? What makes them smile about it? So that was a baseline to understand where we're at today so we know where we need to go tomorrow. Okay, and Mark, uh, what are you hoping to accomplish from these surveys? Like what are you going to be taking specifically from that? Are you going to take everything or just specific things from it? We're really looking at some themes and those have already been identified. And what okay. we want to do with the workshops then is take that survey information and explore really what people mean by specific things that came back. Uh, you know, small time, small time feeling, you know, but you know, a lot of big city attributes. What does that really translate into and how can we take that and go forward in, in terms of projecting a different image for Council Bluffs? And like you just mentioned with those community workshops, there's one coming up soon. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, what's hoping to be accomplished from these um, meetings? Uh, Wendy? Certainly. Um, again, as Mark mentioned, it's really to dive into the results now of the surveys talk about the themes that came out of those and what does it really mean. Um, so if there was a certain theme, have the groups explore that a little bit more and expand upon that. So again, we can kind of dive into the aspects of where we need to go with the whole program. Okay, and when is this first meeting again? July 21st will be the first public uh, workshop. The next okay. one will be August 8th, and then the one after that is August 11th. And Wendy, where is somewhere people can get if they go to if they want more details about this? You go to the website, uh, let's talk about cb.com and you can sign up for the, the workshops there. It gives all the dates and times of each. Okay, Wendy, Mark, thank you for joining us today in studio. Thank you. Thank you. More, stay tuned, more Council Bluffs news coming up right after the break. Schedule your campus visit today. Iowa Western, the world is waiting. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. Hey, I'm Anderson Cooper. As a parent, you want to make sure that your child knows how to deal with bullying when they see it happening. And chances are they want to help, but they don't really know how. I'll teach them that the best thing to do is calmly walk away, find a teacher or other adult, and speak up and do your part. Be that adult they can talk to and trust will listen. Join me to help stop bullying. Go to stopbullying.gov to find out more. The Pottawatomie County Sheriff's Department is warning residents of potential scammers offering to resurface asphalt at discounted rates that could end up costing you. With the summer comes higher temperatures and more travel. It's a bad combination for pavement that may have you wanting to resurface an area on your property. But the Pottawatomie County Sheriff's Department is warning about potential scammers. Typical line is they will come to someone's residence and say, okay, we have a... Uh, some extra asphalt from a 
from a project we're doing down the road and we want to know we can do it for you really cheap. Pottawatomie County Sheriff Jeff Danker was first notified of the scam by the Iowa Department of Transportation. Since then, the Sheriff's Office has received at least one call about one of these possible scammers closer to home. We got the report that uh, somebody with basically the same um, the same story for the most part that they had. They were working in the Oakland area, they had some extra asphalt and they were going to do this. Well, the, uh, the lady that they were talking to had actually had, had heard the fact that we, we were warning people to be careful of this and she told them no, she did not want to do that. After investigating, the company's story didn't add up. Uh, it just, they really didn't look like they were probably legitimate. They end up leaving, and it, uh, you know, she did not, she did not wind up with any any problem there because she did not agree to have them do any work for her. If she would have said yes, there's a possibility she would have been the victim of a scam, receiving only a thin covering that wouldn't last very long. They'll come in and they'll apply asphalt that is usually very thin, and it doesn't last very long. Something that you can prevent by sticking with people you trust. But, uh, you know, if you're going to have work done, whether it's asphalt, whether it's any other type of work, try to deal with, with contractors that are local, that are established, uh, so you don't have to, because once these contractors from, from out of town or out of state, once they leave, it's very hard to get anything done. The Sheriff's Department is telling people that if they suspect a possible scam, deny the work and call local law enforcement. Even with the soaring heat over the weekend, people still enjoy the outdoors. McCoy's Lounge at Thunderbolt hosts a summer bash party Saturday, July 11th, where people bring out their chairs, hang out with friends, and enjoy the sounds of the Mighty Nish Band. We wanted to try a little bit something different to get our league bowlers involved in the summertime and an opportunity for them to come and enjoy the night. This is the second summer bash party at McCoy's Lounge. They plan to host another party later this summer in August. Still to come on Council Bluffs News, there are plenty of furry friends waiting for you at the Midlands Humane Society. Meet them in our Pets of the Week. And stay tuned for a look at this week's events calendar. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. All right, give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? <laughs> to be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Why is my son having trouble in school? Finding lowest airfare to Istanbul. No, I'm tired of fighting with my son over his homework. Home, walk, restaurant, need a review? No, he's smart, but his mind wanders. Seven wonders of the world. Why don't you understand me? I do. I was trying to show how Connor feels every day. Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. This new mom is struggling to get the skates just right. Now she's holding on for dear life. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. 
Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. Hello, I'm Terry Mills and welcome into Pets of the Week. Our first superstar today is a little rat terrier mix named Domino. He was brought in as an owner surrender. I think that's due to potty training. He's not potty trained yet, but we sure are working on it. He's just a little doll. He's about eight months old. He is neutered, up to date on all shots, and will be microchipped before leaving our facility. If you'd like to adopt Domino, his file number is 16646. Our next superstar we want to feature is Katie. She's a four-year-old lab mix. She's a great girl, very gentle. She'd be a great starter dog. She loves to go on long walks. She doesn't pull. She is housebroken. And Katie's file number is 16235. Katie's a great girl. She'd be very calm with a big family, young kids. She's wonderful. This little cutie is Ruthie. She's eight weeks old, and she came in as a stray with her brothers and sisters. We did have her in foster care for a little while just to kind of socialize her. She's a sweet little girl. She will be spayed when she leaves our facility, up to date on all shots and microchipped. If you'd like to adopt Ruthie, her file number is 0008. This is our beautiful Snowbell. She's two to three years old and was brought in as owner surrender. And I'm not sure why, because she's a beautiful cat. She's laid back and gorgeous. She'll be microchipped, spayed, and up to date on all shots before leaving our facility. And her file number is 16662. Again, this is Snowbell, 16662. And you can come down to meet any of our pets we had on today at 1020 Railroad Avenue in Council Bluffs, Iowa. Now time for our weekly events calendar. Just before the battle, Mother, a visit from a Civil War soldier is coming to the Council Bluffs Public Library. An actor portrayed as a Civil War soldier will talk about Iowa's involvement in the war and will have a list of names of Iowans who served in it. The program will run from 3.30 to 5. More information is available at councilbluffslibrary.org. The Geocache Bash is Saturday, July 18th at the Hitchcock Nature Center. The technological scavenger hunt will use GPS devices to locate a list of items. The event will begin at 10 a.m. Registration is $5 at a first-come, first-serve basis. More information at potcoconservation.com. Sunday is 89.7 The River's River Riot with Breaking Benjamin, Hollywood Undead, and 10 Years at West Fair Amphitheater. Tickets are $25 and available through Ticketmaster.com and all Ticketmaster outlets. More details available at 897theriver.com. Thanks for watching this week's Council Bluffs News. CBTV is always looking for your feedback. You can send questions or comments to CBTV at iwcc.edu. Call 712-325-3312 or find us on social media. We're on Facebook and Twitter. Just search CBTV17. Remember to keep it here for the latest scores and updates for local sports in your community by tuning in to the Bluff Sports Zone with J.J. Davis. For your Council Bluffs news, I'm Zach Harper-Blunt. See you next week.